I want to tell you a story, a great story. This story takes place in the near future. You know this story, you've read it, you experienced it. Let me start with one of my favorite quotes of all time. But the editor taught me one important lesson. The key to a great story is not who or what or when, but why. Donald Trump is and has always been a living indictment of the people who run this country. Donald Trump is a man who is deeply flawed, but good at heart. He speaks truth from the mind and the heart. He represents the people and their interests. He's a symbol. The symbol appears only when it's needed the most. There's one accomplishment that Donald Trump did that makes every great thing he ever did pale in comparison. He woke the people up. The symbol is the Great Awakening. There's a virus that is spreading across the world. This virus has many names, but one of its names is definitely not Corona or COVID-19. This virus is better known as communism. It spreads by the cover of social justice, liberalism, oppression, white guilt, and racism. The end goal of this virus is to dismantle from within. This virus uses fear, intimidation, in order to control people and have them give up their rights. This virus spreads to all institutions from government, media, was born in and even the education in the suburb system. of Moscow. He was the son of a high-ranking Soviet army officer. He was educated in the elite schools inside the Soviet Union and became an expert in Indian culture and Indian languages. He had an outstanding career with Novosti, which was the, and still is, I should say, the press arm or the press agency of the Soviet Union. It turns out that this is also a front for the KGB. He escaped to the West in 1970 after becoming totally disgusted with the Soviet system, and he did this at great risk to his life. He certainly is one of the world's outstanding experts on the subject of Soviet propaganda and disinformation and active measures. Well, you spoke several times before about ideological subversion. That is a phrase that uh, I'm afraid some Americans don't fully understand. When uh, the Soviets use the phrase ideological subversion, what do they mean by it? Ideological subversion is, is the slow process which we call either ideological subversion or active measures, activne meropriyatia in the language of, of the KGB, or psychological warfare. What it basically means is to change the perception of reality of every American to such an extent that despite of the abundance of information, no one is able to come to sensible conclusions in the interests of defending themselves, their families, their community, and their country. It's a great brainwashing uh, process which goes very slow and it's divided in, in four basic stages. Uh, the first one being demoralization. It takes from 15 to 20 years to demoralize a nation. Why that many years? Because this is the minimum number of years which requires to uh, educate one generation of students in the country of, of, of your enemy, exposed to the ideology of the enemy. In other words, Marxism-Leninism ideology is being pumped into the soft heads of, of, of at least three generations of American students without being challenged or counterbalanced by the basic values of Americanism, American patriotism. The demoralization process in the United States is basically completed already. Uh, for the last 25 years, actually it's overfulfilled because uh, demoralization now reaches such areas where previously not even Comrade Andropov and, and all his experts would would even dream of such a tremendous success. Most of it is done by Americans to Americans, thanks to lack of moral standards. As I mentioned before, uh, exposure to true information does not matter anymore. A person who was demoralized is unable to assess true information. The facts tell nothing to him. 
uh, even if I shower him with information, with, with authentic proof, with documents, with pictures, even if I take him by force to the Soviet Union and show him concentration camp, he will refuse to believe it until he, he is going to receive a kick in, the, in his fat bottom. When a military boot crashes his balls, then he will understand, but not before that. That's the tragic of the situation of demoralization. The next stage is destabilization. This time, subverter does not care about your ideas and the patterns of your consumption. Whether you eat junk food and get fat and flabby, it doesn't matter anymore. This time, and it takes only from two to five years to destabilize a nation, uh, it's, what, what matters is essentials, economy, foreign relations, defense systems. Uh, and you can see it quite clearly that in some areas, uh, in such sensitive areas as, as uh, defense and economy, uh, the uh, influence of Marxist-Leninist ideas in the United States is absolutely fantastic. I, I could never believe it 14 years ago when I landed uh, in this part of the world that the process will go that fast. Uh, the next stage, of course, is crisis. It, it, it may take only up to six weeks to, to bring a country to the verge of crisis. You can see it in, in Central America now. And after crisis, with a violent change of, of power, structure, and economy, you have so-called the period of normalization. It may last indefinitely. Normalization is a cynical expression borrowed from Soviet propaganda. When the Soviet tanks moved into Czechoslovakia in 68, Comrade Brezhnev said, now the situation in brotherly Czechoslovakia is normalized. This is what will happen in the United States if you allow all these schmucks to bring the country to crisis, to promise people all kinds of goodies and the paradise on earth, uh, to, to destabilize your uh, economy, to eliminate the principle of free market competition, and to put a big brother government in Washington, D.C., with the uh, benevolent dictators like Walter Mondale, who will promise lots of things, never mind whether the promises are fulfillable or not. Your leftists in the United States, all these professors and all these beautiful civil rights defenders, they are instrumental in the process of the, of the uh, uh, subversion only to destabilize the nation. When their job is completed, they are, non, they are not needed anymore. They know too much. Some of them, when, when they get disillusioned, when they see that Marxist-Lenin has come to power, they, obviously they get offended. They think that they will come to power. That will never happen, of course. They will be lined up against the wall and shot. But they may turn into the most bitter enemies of Marxist-Leninists when they come to power. And that's what happened in Nicaragua. You remember most of these uh, former Marxist-Leninists were either put to prison or one of them split and now he's working against Sandinistas. It happened in, in uh, uh, Grenada when Maurice Bishop was, he was already a Marxist, he was executed by, by a new Marxist who was more Marxist than this Marxist. Same happened in Afghanistan when uh, first there was Taraki, he was killed by Amin, then Amin was killed by Babra Karmal with the help of KGB. Same happened in, in Bangladesh when Mujibur Rahman, very pro-Soviet leftist, was assassinated by his own Marxist-Leninist military comrades. It's the same pattern everywhere. Tell me something. How do you know what is happening in the world right now? How do you know what's going on in your country, in your city? You probably turn on to the mainstream media, which includes social media. The amount of cheating was monumental. They managed to get away with the support of all these three-letter agencies, the corrupt media, and foreign interference. There's no reason why they cannot do it again. This time, they won't be caught by surprise, like in 2016. Nothing can stop them from having more Big D machines everywhere in the country. Nothing stops them from having 3 a.m. shutdowns. The courts won't do anything. Supreme Court won't do anything. Even the establishment party, like the GOP, will betray them. They know how obedient the people are. They know they are fearful. They can just create a new virus. It's quite easy at this point. If the mainstream media and social media didn't let you see or even talk about them, how would you even know? 
If our election was stolen and our country has been overthrown, yet they keep it hidden, how will you know? If the mainstream media can completely control public opinion and the flow of information, including from our president, what if I told you that every single one of the mainstream media is being used as a tool to manipulate public opinion? When you control every single channel of information, the truth doesn't really matter. Let me explain to you why there won't be a 2024. Let me explain. Let's start with the obvious. Why are they betraying Donald Trump? All you have to do is look at the COVID relief bill. Look at where 700 out of 900 billion are going. They're going to heads of corporations, heads of establishments, museums, going to probably the most corrupt countries on the planet. Places where they have their kids, relatives, special interests which will donate back to their campaign. It's big money laundry scheme where they enrich themselves using your tax dollars. Refer to section or page 1108, House of Representatives salaries and expenses. They get $28 million, which comes up to about 57,000 salary increase for each. Speaker of the House, Nancy Pelosi, gets 8.3 million raise. 25,000 for official expenses. House Majority Leader, 2.9 million and 10,000 expenses. House Minority Leader, 8.3 million with expenses. You can read that and get angry while you count your $600. Our founding fathers knew all too well the moment when we no longer have free speech, free press to keep the government in check, we no longer have democracy. In 1963, communist goal is to overrun the United States were entered into Congress records. They stated capture one or both political parties, infiltrate the press, gain control of key positions in radio, TV, and motion pictures. After this election, it's pretty clear these goals have been achieved. There won't be a 2024. There won't be an election in 2024, not the way you may think it would be. The world will be a very different place in 2024. Their timetables will be accelerated. In 2021, the Republican Party would lose Georgia and lose the Senate. In 2022, Republicans would be all but extinct. What remains would be a part of the plan. Their betrayals won't be forgotten. The Republican Party won't be winning any elections, at least not the real Republican Party. They won't win it not from the people, and not from the big D. Their betrayal now ensures their final destruction. By 2022, now that they took out Donald Trump, they'll be coming after you. Your freedom will be limited. Your speech will be silenced and censored. Your guns confiscated. By 2024, the coward Supreme Court would have already been packed. Their lack of judgment, foresight, and the ability to stand for the Constitution will ultimately be the cause of their destruction. By 2024, they would have added two more states and four more liberal senators and even more liberal house seats. In 2024, the United States would be either in a civil war or would be in secession. In 2024, the United States will no longer be recognizable.